in this video let us see what is cheese reaction cheese reaction is a food and drug interaction so what are the diet we are going to take this diet may contain one of the substance called tyramine this tyramine can generally produce an increase in the blood pressure leading to hypertension but normally the hypertension produced by tyramine is controlled by our physiological metabolism and whenever this tyramine containing food is given along with the mao inhibitors these drugs increase the effect of the tyramine thereby they increase the hypertensive response which results in severe hypertension so this reaction is called as cheese reaction what are the symptoms of this cheese reaction so different symptoms include severe hypertension severe headache sweating anxiety tachycardia and chest pain you can observe that all these are the symptoms just resembling the sympathetic activations so these mainly result due to the excessive sympathetic response caused by tyramine so other symptoms of cheese reaction include difficulty in breathing nasal bleeding nausea and vomiting visual changes and mental confusion actually what is the tyramine so let us see first of all what is the tyramine tyramine is having this structure and you can observe it is a chemically para hydroxy phenyl ethyl amine so it is a phenyl ethyl amine with a para position a hydroxyl group is present so this is the tyramine how this tyramine occurs in the food so within the food one of the amino acid that is present is tyrosine tyrosine is an amino acid that is present in the food this tyrosine is having a carboxylic acid on the side chain which can be converted into tyramine by fermentation of the food this reaction is uh, mediated by one of the enzyme tyrosine decarboxylase so in the fermented food tyrosine may be converted into tyramine so we can observe a trace amount of uh, tyramine in the fermented food how it acts so tyramine let us compare the tyramine structure with uh, one of the catecholamine norepinephrine so this is the structure of the norepinephrine you can observe that norepinephrine is different from the tyramine in two aspects norepinephrine is having hydroxyl group on the benzene ring and another hydroxyl group at the beta position on the side chain so these two hydroxyl groups are not present in the tyramine so tyramine is not a catechol amine because it is ha not having the catechol oh group similarly it cannot act as a directly acting agonist as norepinephrine then how it acts it acts as an indirectly acting sympathomimetic it displaces the norepinephrine from the storage viscous thereby it increases the norepinephrine levels within the synaptic cleft thereby it increases the noradrenergic transmission so in this way it indirectly increases the norepinephrine levels so suppose tyramine is indicated by symbol t now this is the adrenergic nerve terminal the tyramine can go into the nerve terminal by one of the transporter is called as net that is a norepinephrine transporter so this is the first step where the tyramine can go into the nerve terminal now once it is in the nerve terminal now the tyramine can displace whatever the norepinephrine from the storage viscous and this is the second step involved in the tyramine action and because of this tyramine action norepinephrine can be displaced out of this synaptic viscous within the cytoplasm of the nerve and now this norepinephrine can be leaked out of this nerve terminal again by the norepinephrine transporter where one more molecule of the tyramine is going to be exchanged in this way tyramine indirectly displaces the norepinephrine from the storage viscous without any relation to the exocytosis so this is the fourth step where the norepinephrine is leaked out of the nerve terminal now this norepinephrine can act on the post synaptic receptors which are maybe either alpha or beta receptor thereby it produce the sympathetic response 
So in this way, tyramine can increase the sympathetic response by displacing the norepinephrine from the storage vesicles. Now this norepinephrine which is actually released from the storage vesicles can also be metabolized by one of the enzyme MAVO, monoamine oxidase. So by the action of this monoamine oxidase, norepinephrine can be converted into metabolites. So when this tyramine is given along with the MAVO inhibitors, MAVO inhibitors can inhibit this metabolism thereby norepinephrine is not metabolized within the nerve terminal which is more available for leaking out of the nerve terminal for exchange with the tyramine. In this way, MAV inhibitors will increase the leak of the norepinephrine by inhibiting the metabolism within the nerve terminal. So MAV inhibitors increase the action of the tyramine. So second aspect is the effect on metabolism of the tyramine by MAV inhibitors. So what are the diet we are going to take which is rich in the tyramine this tyramine is going to be absorbed into the systemic circulation. Then it is going to be metabolized by one of the important enzyme, MAVO B enzyme, monoamine oxidase type B enzyme. Now, when we use the MAVO inhibitors, which are non-selective in nature, they can inhibit both MAVO A enzyme as well as MAVO B enzyme. They inhibit this MAVO B enzyme, thereby they inhibit the, the metabolism of the tyramine. MAVO B enzyme is a constitutive enzyme which is present in the plasma which controls the metabolism of the amine type of drugs like tyramine. So non-selective MAV inhibitors inhibit this metabolism thereby they increase the levels of the tyramine within the body. Now these raised levels of tyramine can produce severe hypertension which called cheese reaction. Which type of drugs show the cheese reaction? So as we have seen, cheese reaction is shown by mainly non-selective MAV inhibitors which inhibit both MAVO A as well as MAVO B enzyme. So drugs in this category include isocarboxygen, tranylcipromine and phenylgine. All these three drugs are having the potential risk of producing cheese reaction when they are given with the food containing tyramine. Similarly, MAVO B inhibitors, the drugs like selegelin, and rasagelin, which are used to treat the Parkinson disease, can also precipitate the cheese reaction. And similarly, other drugs which are also having MAU inhibitory activity can also precipitate the cheese reaction. So, such type of drug is the linijolid. Linijolid is an antibacterial which is having the weak MAU inhibitory activity, so which may precipitate the cheese reaction. At the same time, MAVO inhibitor like moclobamide shows the less cheese reaction as it is selective for inhibition of the MAVO A enzyme. So moclobamide is having little or no effect on the cheese reaction. Which food contain tyramine? Now let us see which type of food can contain the tyramine and can precipitate the cheese reaction. So the important source of tyramine is the cheese. Since this drug interaction is initially observed with the cheese, so this drug interaction is called as cheese reaction. But tyramine can also present in the other types of foods, particularly the fermented and smoked foods. Examples include smoked fish, pickled fish, yeast supplements, soya beans, overripe fruits and meat tenderizers. So any of these food can contain the tyramine levels. When these food are given along with the MAO inhibitors, they may increase the cheese reaction. So that's about the cheese reaction, which is a food drug interaction. Whenever the food containing tyramine is going to be administered, the MAO inhibitor should be carefully given. And cheese reaction is more pronounced with the non-selective MAO inhibitors as well as MAO B inhibitors. And we have to check the drugs which can also have MAVO inhibitory activity like linijolid which may also precipitate the cheese reaction.